Those are the new Blazer Kato two times anamorphic lenses. Let's take a closer look. You're watching Synody, supported by B and H and CVP. Hi, I'm Johnny from Synody, and I'm here with Sarah from Blazer. Blazer. It is Blazer anamorphic lens, and today I would love to show you the Kato. Wait, the new Kato, the yeah. two times anamorphic, which are actually so so small. Yeah. They're so small. I actually, I'm going to grab one and I'll show you how small it is. So. Anyone, any, any lens will do, just to show. So here is the new Kato. It is a two times anamorphic lens. It is full frame and this is the 50 that I have in my hand. It is a T2. They're all different T-stops, uh, but we had to keep it lightweight somehow. So the 50 is the fastest. Okay, so that was of course on the expense of T-stop. Of course, yes, but you know, it's it's not crazy because the, the 50 is the best, uh, it's a T2, but then our 40 is a T24, and then our 85 is a T28, and then our 125 is a T32. Okay, so actually the widest in the bench is 40 millimeter? Yes, yeah, so we do have a 40, that is the widest, and it's going to cover full frame. If you're uh, like a V-Raptor user, it's great. If you're shooting an open gate, the 40 and the 50 are actually only going to cover a 16 by 9 sensor, but if you are shooting open gate, it's fine if you're just shooting like a 240 crop. So it'll vignette on the side, but 240 is fine. Okay, but those are full frame cameras, they so the image circle is actually... Full frame, yeah. not not larger. Right, not large. Yeah, full frame, full frame. Um, those are very nice. We've been working with other Blazer lenses before. Uh, we have them in the office, and not the Kato, um, the Remus, the Remus. Re 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 which we really like. That the look is very. It's amazing for the price. It's really unbelievable, and I know I look. I'm, I'm looking excited because the the look is very nice. The question is, what should I expect here with those Kato lenses? Same look. That's a really good question. So there are some similar characteristics between the Remus and the Kato. Of course, the obvious one is going to be the Kato is a two times anamorphic lens and the um, barrel distortion is the same. Actually, the Remus and the Kato both share a barrel distortion. Um, we are only going to have a silver flare for the Kato. And so why is that an interesting decision? We actually there was a pretty high demand for a neutral flare when we were doing the Remus. And so actually, we, we're also going to develop a Remus with a silver flare, which will be available in May. That's also my favorite in a way to have this natural yeah. look yeah. Uh, flare. Yeah, but that's a good decision. I think so. Yeah. But if you guys think it's a you know, you want to see something different from the company, just write in the comment section and let's see how the audience, how the users, uh, what they think about this decision. Yeah. How about uh, the the mount? What mount do you have this camera? So just like the Remus, this lens, <laughs> just like the Remus, uh, we do offer a PL and an EF mount and it's really easy to unscrew. I actually, all you do is you just like unscrew it. <laughs> I can do it in like a minute. It's great. You just getting it unscrewed is so it's a user uh, friendly, like interchangeable, yeah. friendly. you can do this by yourself. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still unscrewing it. Five years later? No, I'm joking. Okay. Come on. There it is. So you see the screws underneath and then all you do is you just swap the screws, pop, pop on the EF mount. It's really simple. It's How about the front diameter? The front diameter uh, for the 50, 85 and 125 is going to be 85. But then the 40 is slightly larger, you know, just to be super wide. So it's 95. Another question. I would love to see even a wider focal length than 40 millimeter. Is there anything that you guys will consider that you can talk about? Ooh, no. <laughs> okay, did, we both saw the no. Okay. <laughs> can no, cannot talk about it yet. We can't talk about it, but, you know, Blazar is up to some pretty cool things. They have been this year. We have some really exciting things coming up, so... I wouldn't put it past it in the future if, if we had something wider, potentially. But, you know, what we did recently do with the Remus, if you are a Remus shooter, um, we did have a lot of Super 35 users wanting to have something wider. So we did introduce the Super 35, uh, 35 millimeter, and that was great. And we have that over there. Um, but then for the full frame people, if, if you want something wider, we're also going to do a, a 33. So if you need really wide, then maybe the Remus for now might be your best bet. How about pricing and availability? 
So the Cato price is not released yet, um, but we'll probably release it around like July or August. And then um, as far as availability goes, uh, the pre-order will start in August and then we will ship in September. So those are really early prototypes? Um, so this is actually the production uh, glass on the 50 and the 85, but then yeah, prototypes of the 40 and the 125 uh, right now. Good. I guess we will have to patiently wait and hope for a friendly price because in this size, in this uh, um, squeeze factor, if the price is right, that's another winner. Absolutely. And in true Blazar fashion, I do know that the price is going to be accessible and affordable. So Maybe, uh, Sarah, maybe you can tell me because the, the company had a different name before. Yeah. It was Great Joy. Just from my curiosity, why did you change the name? I think, um, well, we didn't change the name, but I do know that Great Joy, uh, so the, the start of Great Joy was really interesting because it, it started with just a 50 and it was like a group, kind of like um, a Kickstarter. And then once the 50 released, they were like, let's expand. And I think it, they were just like, this is going to be their own like one and done thing. And they realized, wow, there are like, there's a market for this, like for this affordable anamorphic. Let's like rebrand and like try to actually do something interesting. And so with our new lenses, you know, we're really trying to go for vintage looks. But of course, because it's a modern lens, it's, it's going to be a lot cleaner. And so, you know, it, it won't have like flaws of vintage lenses and it'll it'll be more modern. But the barrel distortion and the flare and the, the characteristics of the bokeh is very vintage. Great. Sarah, is there anything that I forgot to ask or something that you would like to mention? Because we covered quite a lot. I think we covered everything. I think I, I'm excited to know what flare options you guys would like to see in the future because I also really like silver flare. And so I'm super excited about the silver flare. And, and I'm very curious to know how wide would you want to have the next lens out of curiosity? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Sarah, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me, Johnny. Thank you. Guys, thank you very much for watching. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.